In this video, I will complete the very missing link in the diagram I have shown to you since the beginning of my channel. It is none other than integrating Google Assistant to the Home Assistant. Or is it integrating Home Assistant to Google Assistant? Whatever so ever. If you follow this step, you can voice command to the Home Assistant through Google Speaker. Then, the Home Assistant controls the Node MCU to open the garage door. Even though you don't have a smart garage door that supports Google Assistant in your home, you can open the garage door with a voice command. Hello everyone, this is a makeshift channel. When Google Home Mini Speaker came out in 2017, I started buying the product one by one, and I recently bought another Google Nest Mini Speaker for a Black Friday deal. Now, it really seems like Google speakers are all over the corner of my home. As soon as I buy the Google speaker, I really wanted to open the garage door with my voice command. And that was the moment I made some connection with the world of the smart home. With this video, the garage door automation project will come to an end, along with all other smart home functions I planned when I start this channel. While making this channel, I think I spent way more time than I imagined, so I want to take some break once this project finishes. I have some future returning plans, so please watch this video till the epilogue. I hope I will be able to continue making videos with more exciting content. Well, let the last video of the garage door automation begin. I am going to show you how to link Google Assistant to Home Assistant and control the Home Assistant entities with voice commands. First, go to the main website of the Home Assistant. Then, click Integrations. Type Google in the search bar and Google Assistant will appear. If you click this, you will see there are automatic setup and manual setup. Automatic is a cloud service that you can connect easily, but you will have to pay some fee monthly. Manual setup is a way to set up and link directly on the Google Assistant homepage. It is free, but you have to follow the complicated method described here without making a single mistake. In this video, I will demonstrate these complicated procedures step by step so that you can follow them easily. Before starting, please read this warning message carefully. As indicated here, your home assistant must be externally accessible in order to use this service. This method was already explained in the previous Duck DNS video. If you have not seen the Duck DNS video yet, please proceed to the video first. You will also need to log into the Actions on Google Console homepage with the same Google account you are logging for your Google Home app. I am already logged into the same account, but if it's not your case, please proceed to login first. In this state, click New Project. This will connect my Home Assistant to Google Assistant. So, I will name this project my Home Assistant. You can just give any sensible name on it. Then, you have to choose a language for this project. You can choose your own language or just leave it in English. You can also change it later. Then, you need to choose the country or region you live in. Now, click Create Project. What we are going to create is a smart home project. So, click this. Then click Start Building. Wait for a while, and the project will be made. Once created, click Name your smart home action. You will need to give it a name that will appear later when you link it to the Google Home app. I will set it as Makeshift HA. Click Save. Then click Actions on the left side of the screen. In the fulfillment URL, write your Duck DNS URL along with port number 8123. And write slash API slash Google underscore assistant. Once you have done this, click Save. Then click Account Linking on the left. In the Client ID field, type https colon two slashes oath dash redirect dot google user content dot com slash r slash then you will need to write down the project id which is already in the address bar of your web browser it includes my project's name by default and sometimes a combination of some letters and numbers follows 
copy this and paste it at the end of client ID field. Next, write down anything in the client secret. I wrote AAA. Next, in the authentication URL, add the duck DNS address and slash off slash authorize. In the token URL, same as above, except the last part is token. Click next. Another next. Then, write email in the scopes field and click add scope. Write the name and click add scope one more time. Leave this space empty. Don't check this checkbox and click next. Yes, don't think and do whatever it says. Click save. In this state, click the test button. Now, from another web browser window, access to console.cloud.google.com. Of course, you must be logged in with the same ID. Click select a project at the upper area of the screen. And select the project you made just before. One overwhelmingly stunning project dashboard is here. Don't be too overwhelmed and click the hamburger buttons in the upper left corner. From APIs and services, select credentials. Click create credentials at the top. And click service account. In the service account name area, I'll just enter my account. Then, click create and continue. Click continue. And click done. Something has been created here. In this state, click the pencil icon to edit it. Click the keys tab in the upper center area of the screen. Click add key and select create new key. Select JSON. And click create. Then, a JSON file is created. Have a look at where it is saved. If you click close, you can see that a key with more than 7900 years left to expire has been created for free. Click on the search bar at the top center of the screen. Search for Home Graph API and select it. In this state, click Enable. Well done! Now the things to do on the Google homepage are completed. Now, let's do the linking Google Assistant on the Home Assistant side. I'm going to go to the Home Assistant's file editor. Currently, the configuration.yaml file is open. Click the folder icon in the upper left corner. And, click on the new file icon. Name the new file, service underscore account.json. Click OK and a new file will be created. Of course, it is saved on the Raspberry Pi. When I select this file from the list and click in the middle of the screen, the contents of the open file are shown. Of course, it's just blank. Next, I will open the JSON file downloaded from the Google homepage. This file is stored on my computer's local hard drive. Open this file using Notepad, and we can see the contents of the JSON file. Select the entire contents and copy. Paste the contents on the file editor of Home Assistant. Now, the file contents of the service underscore account.json are the same as the downloaded JSON file. Click Save. Then, click the folder icon and open the configuration.yaml file. And let's key in the contents of the Google Assistant somewhere in the file. First, type Google underscore Assistant colon. Two spaces on the next line, type project underscore ID colon. As before, copy and paste the project ID from the URL of the Google Console homepage. On the next line, type service underscore account colon and an exclamation mark include. Then, type the name of the JSON file we just created. On the next line, type report underscore state colon and true. Finally, save it.
This time, instead of restarting here, go to Configuration. And, click the service controls in the list. Click the Check Configuration button. When the configuration valid message is shown, everything is good to go. Even on the file editor screen, there is an icon indicating the syntax error of the configuration.yaml file. But, here you can more thoroughly check the configuration.yaml file before restarting the system. Next, click Restart below the service management. Click OK to restart the Home Assistant. Now, let's open the Google Home app and finalize the linking of the two assistants. One is Google and the other is Home. Tap the plus button at the top left. Tap on Setup Device above. Select Works with Google at the bottom. Services already linked to our home are shown at the top of the list. Below, things that can be connected to Google Assistant are listed. Scroll down a bit and you'll find something marked with test in square brackets. There are five items marked with test for my case because I tried this thing several times before. But, if you do this for the first time, you will see only one. I choose this because the service I am going to link is the one I created earlier, makeshift-ha. When a pop-up window appears, tap link. A moment later, the Google Home app connected to my Raspberry Pi through DuckDNS, and the Home Assistant login screen shows up. Enter the ID and password of your own Home Assistant here. When you click Next, the linking process will commence. Once finished, click the backward arrow to return to the main screen. If you scroll down to here, the entities defined in Home Assistant will be displayed in the Google Home app. I am really glad to see these on the Google Home app. Now, let's open a small camera pop-up screen on the smartphone and tap the Garage Door RC Output button from the Google Home app. OK, as soon as I tap it, the relay was activated right away. However, what you need to know here is how the status of Home Assistant entities are reflected on the Google Home app. In the previous video, when the garage door remote control switch is turned on, the relay on the Node MCU was switched on only for 200 milliseconds, and it is set to off right away. This state was also reflected in the Home Assistant screen immediately. However, this off state is reflected quite late in the Google Home app. Therefore, please remind that there could be a slight time difference in the screen you see here. Now, this garage door remote is already in the off state on Home Assistant, but it still stays in the on state on the Google Home app. But if you tap the switch to enter the switch entity, the status has just changed to off. When if you press again, it stays in on state. If you force it off, nothing happens because it was already in the off state. Pressed again, then it stays in on state. When I exit the switch entity, it is still on. Then, seconds later, it changes to off state. Now, let's enter the garage door RC output again. Tap the gear icon. Then click its name and rename this switch to Omega 13. The switch has been renamed and it is located bottom side because entities are displayed in alphabetical order. And I prepared some voice command lines in English. I'll play this line in front of the Google speaker. OK, Google, activate the Omega 13. Got it. Turning Omega 13 on. OK, when I ordered to activate the Omega 13, the relay was activated. Let's do it again in a different way. I just changed the main language setting of Google Assistant from English to Korean, and I will also change the name of the garage door from Omega 13 to Chago Moon, which means garage door in Korean. It is advisable to put a space between the Chago and Moon.
Next, let's say a voice command in Korean to open the garage door. Well, I make it to speak open the garage door, but the Google speaker said he didn't understand. The reason is that Google Assistant recognizes this garage door as a switch, not a door. So, to get this to work in Korean, you have to speak some awkward commands, like turn on the garage door. So, now the relay is working, but the Google speaker is responding with a weird answer, I am turning on the garage door. How to improve this part will be covered at the end of the video. For now, I just want to add a few things here. As you can see, quite a lot of entities of Home Assistant are shown on the Google Home screen, most of which are not necessary for Google Home. Type exposed underscore domains colon at the bottom of the Google Assistant entry. Two spaces on the next line, type dash input underscore boolean. Switch on the next line. And finally, add cover. If I restart the Home Assistant at this point, only the entities belonging to input boolean, switch, and cover group will be shown on the Google Home app, and the others are not shown, which makes the display nice and clean. Of course, there is no cover defined yet, but we will define it later. Let's move on to the next. Actually, what we have made so far is enough to open the garage door by saying voice command, activate the Omega 13. The name of my YouTube channel is Makeshift, which means that I barely make things work. However, if I stop just here, there remain two things I cannot accept. The first is safety, and the second is security. As for safety, I already explained in the previous video that closing the garage door without watching is very dangerous. In the current state, if you say activate the Omega 13, the relay will unconditionally operate the remote control button. So, the garage door can open up, close down, or stop moving. For the sake of safety, I am going to boldly remove the capability of closing the garage door with a voice command. You can only open the garage door by speaking. This can be easily implemented by checking the status of the garage door when the home assistant receives a request to open the garage door with a voice command. It can simply reject the command if the garage door state is not closed. Then, the next thing is security. The reason I changed the garage door to Omega 13 is that the name of the garage should be a kind of secret command only known to our family. It's like the magic phrase, open sesame, in the story of Ali Baba and the 40 thieves. It could be very unlikely, but if someone who knows the secret name of our garage door shouts OK Google, activate the Omega 13, outside of our home using a loudspeaker, the garage door might open. Of course, I searched for examples of successful operation of Google speaker outside the house with a loudspeaker, but I couldn't find anything, nor did I test it myself. Probably, it could be technically resolved by using the voice match function supported by Google Assistant, which makes Google speaker only respond to my own voice. However, I could not find an example of implementing this luxurious voice match for such a personal home assistant project. If anyone knows, please leave a comment. So, the first method I am pursuing instead of the voice match is to make the name of the garage door confidential, only known to the family members. The second method is to create one more software-based lock. I will call this device the Omega 12. The user first has to say Google speaker a voice command to unlock the Omega 12. This unlock state lasts 5 minutes only. Within these 5 minutes, the user has to say activate the Omega 13 to open the garage door. However, if you have to speak voice command twice to open the garage door, it would be very inconvenient. So I'll make an exception during busy times. When you go to work or take the kids to school, you will be allowed to say the voice command just once to open the garage door. And during non-busy hours, if you say activate the Omega 13 without unlocking the software lock, the home assistant will say that it is not a service time. As before, I will make such functionalities using the node red. 
First, go to the file editor and add two input booleans to the configuration.yaml file. We can do it by copying the existing input boolean. Paste it twice. The first input boolean is lock underscore release. This will also be called lock release. The second input boolean is set as garage underscore door underscore open. We will also name it garage door open. Save and restart the home assistant. When the restart is done, go to no dread. Go to the garage door control tab and zoom out the screen a bit. Then bring the event state node. The name of the node is request lock release. Type input boolean in the entity ID and select the lock release you just created. Change the condition of if state from string to boolean. Leave the condition value as true. And also change the state type from string to boolean. If you hit done, the number of the output terminal of this node changes to 2. When the lock release state changes from false to true, the output goes to the upper terminal and to the lower terminal in other cases. We are only interested in the case that the user makes a voice command to change the lock release state from false to true. So bring the delay node and connect it to the first terminal of the event state node. Then the next is a call service node. Connect it with the output of the delay node. The name of the call service node is reset lock release. The domain is input boolean. The service to call is turn off. And select the entity ID as input boolean lock release. This is a simple flow. When it is requested by a voice command to change lock release to true, this state is maintained for 5 seconds, then the state of lock release changes back to false. In reality, it should be 5 minutes, but I leave it to 5 seconds for the experiment. Let's take two debug nodes and connect them to the two output terminals of the event state node. And connect another debug node to the output of the call service node. Hit deploy. Open the Google Home app on your smartphone and turn on the lock release. One true value is in the debug pane. Five seconds later, both true and false were showed up at the same time. When you move the mouse, you can see which debug node the true and false values came from. And the lock release on the Google Home app is still on, but when you go into the switch entity, its state is already changed to off. We saw that the lock release works as expected, so I will delete the debug nodes and change the delay time to 5 minutes. Now, let's process an input boolean garage door open. This input boolean will change state when we try to open the garage door with a voice command. Name this node, request garage open. Select garage door open for entity ID. Similarly, the type of if state is boolean. Change the state type to boolean as well. Click done. Then, bring the current state node and connect it. The name is check door already open. Enter the sensor in the entity ID. We can choose either the garage door status which is the sensor we made previously, or the binary sensor garage door closed. I will choose the binary sensor. Then, change the type of if state to boolean and leave the value to compare as true. Change state type to boolean. When we hit done, the number of output terminals of this current state node becomes 2. The node produces output to its first terminal only when the garage door is closed status. So, you can make the voice command to take action only when the garage door is closed. Then, copy the change node and the Google TTS node from above and paste them in the bottom area. Rename the change node to already open. Change the message to say that the garage door is already open. If you connect this node to the second terminal of the current state node, you can make the Google speaker tell that the garage door is already open when you are trying to open the not close garage door by voice command. Let's connect the first terminal of the current state node to a debug node to check its operation. Next, copy the call service node from above and paste it below. 
and connect it to the first output terminal of the event state node. Rename this node to reset garage open. Change the entity ID to garage door open. When the state of the input boolean changes to true, it is immediately reset to false to prepare for the next voice command. Let's reposition those nodes. Hit deploy. Open the garage door. Garage door is opening. Try turning on the garage door open on your phone. Garage door is already open. Then it will say that the garage door is already open. Close the garage door. Garage door is now closed. If you turn it on again. The true value was successfully passed to the debug node this time. I will adjust the position of the current state node a bit and also delete the debug node. Then, connect another current state node to the first output of the previous current state node. The name of the node is check lock release. Entity ID is input boolean lock release. Type of the if state is boolean and the value is true. Change the state type to boolean. Then, bring the call service node and connect it to the first terminal of this node. I want to open the garage door as long as the lock release status is true. So the name of the call service node is open garage door. The domain is switch. Service is turn on. And select the switch.garagedoorrc output for the entity ID. It means that it will operate the relay by changing the voltage of the GPIO output pin of node MCU. Click done. This time, bring the time range node and connect it to the second terminal of open lock release. Even if the lock is not released, if the voice command is spoken at a specific time range, the garage door will be opened immediately. The first time range will be the time to go to work. It will be set from 6.20 to 6.50. So, if the current time is in this time range, the output will be out from the first terminal. I will connect this terminal to the call service node to open the garage door. Then copy one more time range node and connect it to the second output of the previous time range node. This time, we will set from 7.50 to 8.15, and this is the time for kids to go to school. And connect the first output of this node to the call service node. Then, copy the change in the Google TTS node and place them next to the time range node. Change the name of the node to not a service time. and change the content to sorry, it is not a service time. Also, bring the delay node and place it in front. I will set the time to two seconds. It will make the Google speaker's voices easier to understand by giving a time gap. Now we connect this node to the second output terminal of the rightmost time range node. In this way, when a request to open the garage door is received with a voice command, first, it resets this input boolean. At the same time, it makes sure the garage door is closed. If it is not closed, it will tell you that the garage door is already open. If the garage door is closed, it checks the lock release status. If you have released the lock within the past 5 minutes, it will directly flow to the call service node and open the garage door. Otherwise, it checks if it is a busy time for going to work or school. If it is not the case, the Google speaker will say that it is not a service time. If it is a busy time, it opens the garage door even if the lock release is false. Now, let's deploy it. And before saying the voice command, I'll go inside the lock release entity and change its name from the setting. Lock release's secret name is Omega 12. And the garage door open, which is another input boolean, will be renamed as Omega 13. So now let's do some tests. First, if I try to get the Omega 13 to work. OK Google, activate the Omega 13. All right, turning Omega 13 on. Sorry, it is not a service time. It says it's not a service time. So I will activate the Omega 12 to release the lock. Google, activate the Omega 12. Sure, turning on Omega 12. 
Then, if you activate the Omega-13. Okay, Google, activate the Omega-13. Sure, turning on Omega-13. Yes, you can hear the relay sound. Now, let's think about the voice command we are using to open the garage door. Basically, the device that opens the garage door is recognized as a switch when it is linked from Home Assistant to Google Assistant. So, when I tried to open the garage door in Korean, the voice command was turn on the garage door instead of open the garage door. In English, it sounds a little bit better if I name the garage door Omega-13 and use the verb activate instead of turn on. However, there should be a better way for commanding to the Google speaker. If you really want to command the Google speaker saying open as a verb, you have to use the cover template instead of the switch. As explained in the previous video, the cover is a template suitable for opening and closing devices such as doors, garages, curtains, and windows. We are not going to use all the functions of cover template. But, in order to use open as a verb in the voice command, we will define the cover template. The cover template has to be defined in the configuration.yaml file. In the appropriate area, type cover colon and enter. In the next line, put two spaces followed by a dash platform colon. And type template. Two spaces in the next line and type covers colon. Two more spaces on the next line and garage underscore door colon. Another two spaces on the next line, device underscore class colon. And let this be a window, not the garage. Covers with device types door, garage, or gate are considered to be secured device, and they require complicated processes to use with Google Assistant. So I am using the window to make things easy. The friendly name is just garage door. Changing to the secret garage door name can be done in the Google Home app. Since the main purpose of this template is not to fully utilize the cover template, but just to use the verb open as a voice command. So the definition of this cover template doesn't require the completeness. So for the value underscore template. Open double quotation mark. Open two curly brackets. Open and close single quotation marks. Close two curly brackets. And close double quotation mark. On the next line, type open underscore cover colon. Let's define the behavior when asked to open the garage door. Put two more spaces and service colon input underscore boolean dot turn underscore on. The target, as you guessed, is the thing to be opened. Two more spaces followed by entity underscore id colon. And input underscore boolean dot garage underscore door underscore open. And on the next line, go back four spaces and define the behavior for the closing. Type close underscore cover colon. And that's all. Because there's nothing to define for the closing activity. It's all done. Hit save. Go to the configuration. Click on server controls. Press check configuration to make sure what you entered is correct. Then, restart the home assistant. OK, so when the restarting is done, you will see the overview screen of Home Assistant that we have been made so far. Before we do our final demonstration, let's rename the entities in the Google Home app. First, I will change the entity to English to use English voice commands. On the screen you can see the garage door defined as cover, leave it as it is, because we will open the garage door with this name. And the Chago Moon you see here is garage door in Korean, and it is actually a GPIO pinout of the Node MCU, so it doesn't need to be called as a garage door anymore. So, if you delete the name, it will be replaced with its original name, Garage Door RC Output. The Omega 12 is a lock release input boolean, I will use it as is, so I won't touch it for now. Omega 13 is an input boolean for opening the garage door, but from now on, I will not mention this name in the voice command. Instead, I will mention the garage door, which is defined as a cover, to use the verb open in the voice command. So, I will change the Omega 13 to its default name which is garage door open. Now when you pull and release the screen from above, the Omega 13 disappears, leaving only its original name, garage door open. Okay, let's do a demonstration.
I've changed settings to English, and I will command to open the garage door. Okay, Google, open the garage door. Got it, opening the garage door. Sorry, it is not a service time. It tries to open the garage door, then it says it's not a service time. So I will release the lock by activating the Omega 12. Okay, Google, activate the Omega 12. All right, turning on Omega 12. And ask to open the garage door again. Okay, Google, open the garage door. Got it, opening the garage door. The garage door is opening. Yes, it really opens. The garage door condition is being simulated by hands. Garage door is now open. Yes, it's perfect. Now, I will change the settings to Korean. The name of the Omega 12 will be changed to Lock Release in Korean. The cover template, Garage Door, changed to Chago Moon which is Garage Door in Korean. It needs a space between Chago and Moon. And do the demonstrate in the same way as English. Okay, okay. 차곡은 지금 엽니다. It is not a service time. 오케이, 오케이. 차곡은 잠금 해제 실행. 네, 차곡은 잠금 해제에 전원을 켭니다. 오케이, 오케이. 차곡은 열어. 네, 차곡은 지금 엽니다. Garage door is opening. Garage door is now open. Yes! Okay, the final demonstration of this garage door project is done. And really for the last, the entities that need to be shown in the Google Home app should be lock release and the cover garage door only. Since the input boolean garage door open and switch garage door RC output are also exposed in the Google Home app, there is a risk of opening or closing garage door by mentioning this entities. In order to make these entities invisible in the Google Home app, let's refer to this home page. In the configuration.yaml file, if you add entity config in the Google Assistant area and set the expose property to false, you can make entities invisible in the Google Home app. So, if you add entity config as shown on the screen, or copy the contents of the configuration.yaml file that appears when you click see more of this video, you can hide these entities from the app. Okay, this is the end of the makeshift projects I planned. When I started this channel, I was not so confident that I could finish all the projects I planned or not. But, by uploading today's video, I managed to cover all the smart home functions that I mentioned in the channel introduction video. My purpose is, of course, to monetize this channel. I haven't achieved this goal yet, but I'm very happy because quite a lot of people have subscribed to my channel and watched videos. Someday, I will come back to this channel with some new projects when things are becoming in favor of me. Perhaps, if I could convince the list provider to buy a smart roller shade controller or a smart valve. I will create a smart roller shade that blocks the amount of sunlight appropriately depending on the weather and sunset time. If possible, I want to make it solar powered. I also want to make a project that saves water by controlling the valves to the sprinkler water lines based on the weather history and forecast. There are smart sprinkler systems already available on the market that controls valves by measuring rainwater or moisture in the soil. But, from my point of view, installing and powering outdoor sensors involve a lot of things to consider. So, I just want to give up accurate measurements and build an indoor smart sprinkler system that only relies on weather forecasts and history. With the hope that I will come back someday, the first part of the makeshift smart home project ends here. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.